Hi guys, Kurt and Matt here. With Marvel Now, there's so many new and exciting series that for new and prospective readers, it's difficult to know what to read. So we're going to take a step back and do a series of videos telling you the gist of each comic series, our personal opinions on each, and a good jumping on point for you guys. We're going to sift through the dirt so you don't have to. In this video, we're going to be talking about the X-Men corner of the Marvel Universe. Brian Michael Bendis takes the X-Men in a completely new direction with all new X-Men. After AVX, Beast is upset as he feels Cyclops has lost his way. Hank's solution is to pull their younger selves out of the past so Scott can see his younger self. The hope is that a more innocent version of Scott can remind the older version of whom Xavier wanted him to be and set him back on the right path. However, when Beast brings the original five X-Men, Scott, Jean, Bobby, Warren, and Hank, to the present, they decide they don't want to leave. All new X-Men follows the five as they attempt to come to terms with their new reality and find where they themselves fit in. This series has blown away my expectations. I expected the time traveling mutants to be a gimmick and something that sells issues but lacks any real substance. Instead, the younger X-Men have provided an insightful perspective on what the current X-Men status quo has become. Whether it be questioning the Scarlet Witch's inclusion on the Avengers or questioning Beast's moral high ground, every issue brings something new and fun. I love how this series has added a brand new layer to the already complicated X-Universe. As comic book fans, we always look to the past and reminisce how the good old days were so much better than now. This comic reminds us that even back then, old school heroes weren't perfect. This series is also great for new readers in that they can learn everything they need to know about the X-Men universe at the same time the original five do. All New X-Men is truly one of the highlights of Marvel now, and I think it is a must read. The mutant revolution begins here in Uncanny X-Men. Spinning out of the events of AVX, Cyclops and his remaining team of Magneto, Emma Frost, and Magic are wanted terrorists who have rebranded themselves as revolutionaries fighting for mutant justice. The potent and commanding threat they portray to the rest of the world hides their internal problems. Not only must they repair relationships broken during AVX, they must find a way to fix their malfunctioning powers, all the while teaching new mutants what it means to be an X-Men. Bendis has done a great job of providing a fresh new take on Scott and his gang in this series. Everything about the team's new mission is distinct from their revolutionary rhetoric to their brand new costumes. And the introduction of interesting new characters like Eva and Joseph only enhances the series. This is definitely one of the top tier X-Men titles. Cyclops has come a long way from the one-dimensional lover boy slash goody two-shoes leader that he used to be. His revolution reimagines the Brotherhood of Mutants credence of mutant safety first in a smart and compelling package. With great dialogue, a fun premise, and some old favorites on the roster, this series is a must read. Astonishing X-Men follows the Wolverine School street team. The series features a revolving lineup, but usually features Wolverine, Iceman, Gambit, Warbird, Karma, and Northstar. The series is different from the other X-Men titles in that it tries to focus much more on our heroes as people. It focuses on the personal lives and everyday problems of the characters, rather than larger themes like mutant intolerance or extinction. I think with so many X-Titles, this is one that is often regrettably overlooked. Marjorie Liu took over with issue 48 and has done an excellent job. The story arcs may seem random and disconnected, but they provide an insight into these characters that other titles don't. This is definitely a change of pace from other X-Men titles, but I'd still recommend it. I find that each arc in this series is so radically different as each arc focuses on a different character. For me, some of them were hits while others were misses. Still, this series had some memorable moments, like Northstar getting married and Iceman awkwardly having lunch with all of his past girlfriends. If you're looking for an X-Men series that is more down to earth than some of the other titles, then this is for you. Wolverine the X-Men focuses on the teachers and students of the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. After AVX, new students began arriving at the school signaling the start of what amounts to the second year. The school continues as usual with normal interruptions of field trips, rescue missions, and even date nights. With a huge cast of teachers and students at its disposal, the series can mix and match like no other X title. But the heart of the series and the real draw is seeing the steady progression of the next generation of X-Men. For me, the best part of Wolverine and the X-Men is how Jason Aaron does such a great job of writing these kids. We can see Evan struggle to avoid becoming Apocalypse, Kid Gladiator change from an entitled prince to a friendly teammate, and Quentin Quire slowly evolve from a villain into a hero and potential leader of the X-Men. The series is at its best not when Wolverine and the other teachers are tromping around, but rather when Aaron is showing these children to grow up right before our eyes. 
Jason Aaron has created a brand new generation of X-Men, and for that, this is a must-read series. This is a series that I think has had ups and downs, but after the reinfusion of new students and refocusing on the school and its kids, the series is back in form. Seeing the development of troubled teens harkens back to the roots of what the X-Men are all about. Love problems, self-esteem issues, and rebellious streaks are par for the course, even among the teachers at times. Plain and simple, this series is about the next generation, so if you enjoy seeing new mutants sprinkled with some teen drama, the series is for you. Brian Wood's X-Men team features an all-female cast. The lineup includes Kitty, Rachel Gray, Psylocke, Storm, and Rogue, and of course fan favorite Jubilee. One of the last Marvel Now titles to debut, the series focuses on what the X-Men is for many of its members, family. Admittedly, the series is off to a strong start by bringing back some old X characters like Omega Sentinel, Jubilee, and even the villain John Sublime. But my question is, how will this series fit in with the rest of the X titles? Is this simply another Astonishing X-Men? Another Wolverine side adventure series? Even with some art that I thoroughly enjoy, until I know where this is going, I can't recommend it. This is an interesting story and it's hard to judge, but I'm definitely interested. I enjoyed the fact that the series hasn't bombarded me with the fact that the cast is all female. Rather, their unison seems more natural and real. The Gambit series is very straightforward. It's about Gambit being who he is. A charming thief with a sharp tongue, but being a romantic at heart. Gambit is back to his old thieving ways, stealing from venture capitalists, intelligence agencies, and crime bosses. Along the way, he woos a few damsels in distress and runs into some old girlfriends as well. While it's fun to see Gambit walking the fine line between hero and criminal, the series doesn't really stick out to me. Still, if you're a diehard fan of the character Gambit, this series might be worth reading. This is just Gambit being Gambit. If you're already a huge Gambit fan, you've already checked this series out and decided for yourself it's worth your time. Personally, I feel Gambit is best utilized as a supporting character, someone who can provide an awesome line or cool trick every few panels. So my advice is to just skip this one. The newest volume of X-Men Legacy focuses on David Heller, aka Legion. As a character with many personalities, each containing a different superpower, he has limitless but overwhelming power. David has always struggled to maintain control over himself. In the past, he looked to his father, Charles Xavier, for guidance. But after the events of AVX, he has been left alone. The series is a journey of self-discovery for David. Along the way, he is forced to battle villains, Avengers, X-Men, and even himself. I'm not a fan of Legion. His character has always been used as an easy fix to a solution because of all the powers he can pull out of his head. He's like a get out of jail free card for lazy writing. But this series has done a good job of minimalizing what I see as simple design flaws in the character itself. Legion's humanizing interactions with Blindfold and an anti-mutant group are prime examples of why I'm still willing to give this series a chance. I personally find Legion to be a rich and intriguing character. The X-Men mini event Age of X was one of my favorites over the last few years. Unfortunately, this series doesn't utilize Legion well in my opinion. I feel like it only scratches the surface of David. For example, the Mind Prison seems to be like a creative cop-out that could be much better done. I'd recommend skipping this series. Wolverine is back with a new creative team. You're going to see a lot of stabbing, a lot of explosions, some more stabbing, and a whole bunch of snarling. This time around, it seems Wolverine is going to be working with S.H.I.E.L.D. to combat the mysterious threats only someone like Wolverine can handle. He's still the best at what he does, and he's taking the steps to push his powers to their limits. I think Wolverine is already the most overused and overexposed character in the Marvel Universe, and this series really doesn't help his case. If you want to read a Wolverine comic, there are so many better choices out there. This is just not worth it. To be honest, I always enjoy a good Wolverine tale because he's one of the few heroes that's willing to get his hands dirty but so far it does not seem like this is going to be one of them. X-Factor Investigations is a team of mutants who explore strange and unnatural mysteries in the Marvel Universe. They could be described as an X-Men themed X-Files. For the most part, the series stands apart from larger Marvel stories and events. While the cast has rotated quite a bit over the course of its run, Madrox, Siren, Layla Miller, and Monet have always been somewhat constant. The cases they deal with can involve almost any part of the Marvel Universe, including Mephisto on Earth, Deathlock Field Futures, Hunts for Werewolves, and as Guardian Ragnarok in Las Vegas. I like the premise of an Anything Goes adventure title, where nearly any aspect of the Marvel Universe is up for grabs. 
but I've never been a fan of either the long-standing cast members or the revolving door of other heroes. What I like about the Marvel Universe is that it really goes out of its way to make sure everything feels connected, something I really enjoy. This series has always seemed disconnected, and that's something I can't get into without a strong lead character to get behind. I believe that X Factor is one of the most underrated series in all of comics. Layla Miller is one of the coolest characters around. She just knows things. She can catch glimpses of the future and studied magic under Victor Von Doom. While the series is ending soon, I think this is a worthwhile and fun read for any X-Men fan. Savage Wolverine follows Logan as he hacks his way across the Marvel Universe. This story is all about putting Wolverine in the spotlight to show that he's the best at what he does. The first story finds him trapped in the Savage Land with only Shayna the She-Devil to help him survive the environment, while the second story puts Wolverine back in New York interacting with the likes of Kingpin and Elektra. No matter what situation he's put in, rest assured, Wolverine will be slashing his way to victory. I see this series as very similar to The Avenging Spider-Man. The series does have longer arcs but still features Logan teaming up with various members of the Marvel Universe. The plot doesn't get that deep as Logan simply slices and dices his way through everything. Therefore, I'm willing to pass on this series. As with any title with rotating craters, the quality of the series can deviate with each arc. Even though I recommend skipping it, if you're dead set on reading a Wolverine series, this is probably going to be the better of the two. Though the storylines have been nothing special, the artwork has been sublime. With Frank Cho and Joe Mad as the artists, the artwork has especially been suited for Wolverine's style of story. If you have any disagreements with what we said, or if you want to share your own thoughts, we'd love to hear them on any of these series we talked about. Just leave your thoughts in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out our other Marvel Now guides. 